This is a cardboard box. But inside the cardboard box is a little known terminal known as the Quazon Quicklink 100. Uh, this was labeled in the eBay listing as a video tax, uh, but I think that's a little generous. Um, it is basically a dial-up terminal that you can hook up to a television. Uh, this can be used to access early online systems like your Prodigies, your CompuServes, uh, all very pre-internet. Uh, this appeared to come out or be made around 1983. I'm not actually sure if it was released to consumers. Uh, this is the QuickLink 100. Uh, there's a fair amount of documentation online for the 300, but I can't find hardly anything about the 100. Uh, so maybe it was for industry. Uh, I mean, I reboxed this, but when I first got it out of the package, it seemed basically new in box. So inside the box, you get this power adapter, which I'm pretty sure is just a transformer inside. A good old RF switch box, uh, a telephone line, and this cord, which, ooh, which I already have hooked up and I can make it go brighter by touching it which is kind of neat. Um, I also, it also comes with this envelope, which contains the user manual, along with some brochures for the type of services you would access with this. Um, it's yellowed a bit, but inside you can see the very uh, professionally typeset um, instructions for this. Uh, this follows the theme with this terminal. It seems like not homebrew, but definitely just the level above homebrew. That's why I'm not sure this might be a prototype or some kind of a production test, something like that. Uh, but also all these brochures in here kind of uh, give it away as a consumer product. We have stuff for Timnet, Timenet, uh, the source, which I believe was uh, run by Radio Shack, as you can see this ends in 84, so I think we've uh, missed the boat on that. Some more stuff with Source, uh, Delphi, uh, booking airline tickets, that was a big thing with these services back in the day. More Source, uh, yet more Source, uh, the registration envelope. A uh, flyer for CompuStore, which I believe is like an early mail order thing. And as you can see, that's the 300 pictured there. So a little bit more features. And also this one for MCI Mail, which seems to be a service where you can email them a letter and they will print it out in the city of the letter's recipient and then will be given to a courier to then deliver it same day. Kind of like a telegram, I guess. Um, and also this, which I believe uh, was supposed to go on the box because there's a miscolored portion in there. And all this will be scanned and uh, put online, of course, especially the manual because I doubt that's online now. Uh, but with that said, let's uh, get it hooked up and uh, try it out. On the rear of the unit, we have the uh, phone jack, the power input uh, hole that I don't know what it's for. There's uh, no footprint in there. Uh, the RF output and this what I assume to be an expansion connector uh, though of course nothing like that was ever made for it and on the bottom is a whole lot of nothing uh, so I'm gonna hook this up and we can try it out uh, I would normally capture the footage uh, but this outputs a really strange signal and none of my capture devices uh, agree with it at all uh, even non CRT televisions don't display the image very well so I'll be doing the old uh, point it at the uh, screen and hope for the best. I wouldn't really call this a microcomputer because you can't load your own programs. It doesn't have much IO besides the modem, uh, but it does have a similar architecture to it. It uses the TV as the output and it also doesn't have a power switch, which I've always found incredibly annoying. So we will hook this up and it's booted. Uh, very simple interface. You have one setting to change, which is the parity. So once you're ready to dial in, you press the dial key right here and we get dial tone. Uh, unfortunately, this only uses pulse dialing, uh, which my phone line doesn't support. Uh, so this is gonna do a whole lot of nothing other than produce interference on the screen. 
because this is a uh, well engineered. Uh, but a trick you can do with these kind of systems is that you can take a regular phone, uh, dial into where you want to go. In this case, I'll be dialing into the uh, Retro Battle Stations BBS. Wait for that to dial in. And then we... And now we're dialed in. So I can hang this up and we are connected to the BBS. Uh, so now we enter our username and this is the worst part of this by far. This keyboard is the worst keyboard I might have ever used in my life. As you can see, it is completely flat. Uh, so you only know what you're pressing by looking at it. And it requires a lot of force to press the key. Um, so you can't touch type at all. You cannot type fast at all. It is terrible. Um, also, for some reason, it only types in uppercase, uh, which means you're yelling all the time. Uh, I don't really know why that is, considering it can clearly display lowercase. Um, but, you know, you can connect, and it does work. Um, I've been connected in a few days, and of course, being BBS week, uh, it is relatively active. But other than that, I mean, the font is readable, it's a very clear video. Um, and yeah, this would have been a pretty cool device back in the day, uh, especially for 84, uh, which is the copyright date on the keyboard. Um, and we can just see this info streaming in. But uh, let's try to write a message. So, oh, also whenever you press shift, it makes that noise. Uh, which is lovely. And Carrier Lost. Wonderful. Uh, looks like it might have hung up from... Uh, might have timed out. Or it just broke because the uh, phone lines. So uh, let's try that again. And busy. Just really simulating uh, all of the 80s BBS experiences. I'm surprised this kind of device wasn't more common back in the day. Um, there were clearly a lot of online services um, and I feel like a dedicated simple terminal to just access those uh, would have appeal. I think a big problem of it was price. I couldn't find any pricing information on this but I doubt it was that cheap and those online ex services were incredibly expensive. Um, like sometimes a dollar per minute, uh, which is just insane. Uh, compare that to, you know, a simple TRS-80, uh, which you can get for pretty cheap in 84. And uh, that has a lot more functionality. Um, but it's still a neat thing. It's also nice how it's so simple to use. I mean, again, one setting, you dial, that's it. sign so far. Here we go. Oh, and I checked the manual. According, apparently you can shift it into lowercase by doing control and shift, which doesn't seem like a very good system, but what do I know? Oh! I've never been so excited by lowercase letters in my life. Why is all caps the default? I do not understand. All right, subject line written. Let's write a message. So maybe 
I take back some of the stuff I said about the keyboard. Once you get going, I mean, it's still not good to use. I would never use it willingly, but I mean, it's not like there were tons of typos and I was going at a respectable speed. Um, so honestly, it isn't too bad. Plus, this was really meant more as a data retrieval device, you know, getting stock quotes, uh, news, all the stuff that they always say for online services. So really, I think it would be okay at his job, um, especially because it allowed them to make such a cheap product in such a uh, small little box. Uh, so overall, a neat little piece of history and uh, a great way to uh, log into all your BBSs. Uh, happy BBS week, everyone. Uh, see you around.